I do a lot of reflection as I run and a lot of companies try to do too much. So as I run, you come up with one powerful thought or one powerful idea and lob that into your boardroom or lob that into your company at the right time because you can't be lobbing stuff in all every day. It may have amazing impact to take that company or that business on a whole new direction in the journey. At the age of 27, a young Queensland vet bought a small veterinary practice in Townsville. Ten years later, Glenn Richards had developed five vet clinics and a large format pet store and two veterinary hospitals in China. It was clear there was an entrepreneurial spirit driving this incredible journey. One which continued into a multi-million dollar integrated pet care empire operating more than 200 veterinary hospitals in Australia and New Zealand and becoming Australasia's leading specialty pet care retailer. Glenn now spends his time as a professional investor, mentor and director. Entrepreneurs like Glenn are unique in the way they see the world and the way they approach business. It begs the question, what is at the heart of the entrepreneur? I think at the heart of the entrepreneur is definitely tenacity, that willingness to continue no matter how hard the journey is. I think having a, a willingness to, to never give up, but to be constantly thinking about, have I got the right team? Am I asking the right questions of my team? Am I creating the right environment? And I can tell you the commonality I see in, in most entrepreneurs is one, they're willing to listen. They are generally humble, but they have an absolute burning desire to deal with a, with a problem and come up with a solution to seize an opportunity and, and to get excited on a day-to-day -day basis. And part of, I think, a lot of entrepreneurs make up is the ability to get others around them excited, to try and tackle whatever we're going to tackle, but enjoy it. And, and having fun in the workplace and creating this sense of purpose and a, and a vision that gels people together to give that extra discretionary effort so you're creating a team that goes 110%. Glenn has always surrounded himself with people that believe in his purpose and are willing to come along for the ride through thick and thin. A trait familiar with the team's entrepreneurs help build. What I find is I surround myself with high detail people willing to have really robust conversations with me, tell me the truth, and, and we get into these great robust debates around what's working and what's not and, and brainstorming sessions. So what I do love is making sure you accept you can never be good at everything and you need to accept that others are going to contribute on the journey. Create a team that is going to be well best so you can be exceptional because you cannot be great at everything but you can assemble a team and your job then is to make that team exceptional. People like Glenn draw on their own personal experiences and the many lessons learned along the way. Quite often these present themselves in moments that really test the human spirit. Growing up in Western Queensland, I was born in the 60s and uh, that was the period of a 10 year drought. So uh, I think I was four before I actually saw it rain and ran outside and, uh, you know, into this teeming rain and mud being created. You know, I'd, I'd look back now and I think a couple of big influences there that, that uh, you know, the journey is always hard, droughts are always around the corner and, and you will always have to fight uh, and try and manage whatever is coming at you. But on the flip side, from a business point of view, I realised and, and explained it to my father in my 20s that I didn't enjoy the fact that I couldn't control some of the, the biggest influences on whether you'd be successful or not. I couldn't control whether it was going to rain or not. For me, I'd, I'd made a decision that I would be a companion animal vet and, and run veterinary practices because I knew I could control the, the customer experience, the way my, my pet owners interacted with me. I knew I could control my surgical and medical approaches, try and be the best I could by being the best educated vet in the, the community that I, that I competed in or the marketplace I, I worked in. I knew that, that I could influence my, my people around me to, be, to give a positive customer experience, to be the best they could be. So I think coming out of, out of Western Queensland was, was one, taught me tenacity taught me to have a go and, and you're always going to face hardships. But at the same time, it taught me that you've got to try and get control in business as many of those major influences that, that impact your business and control them better than the competitors, better than your opposition, better than anyone else in your industry to be the most successful. 
Each of our entrepreneurs in the judging panel have had their own unique journeys. There are similarities and without doubt, unique and important differences. When I was a, a young vet in Townsville, you know, late 20s, early 30s, and you, you have that humble arrogance, you just don't know what you don't know. And I was rolling along fast and decided to open another couple of vet clinics and a pet store in the same 12 month period. And we pushed our cash flow right to the end where we nearly ran out of, out of dough. I remember saying to one of my business partners, Wendy, do not ask me about a dividend because I don't know when it's going to come and taking us right to the edge and I realised the importance of discipline planning, of trying to map out your financial roadmap, your financial forecast, map out your cash flows so you know when you need funding and I can tell you it's, it reinforces the importance of the different members of your team, your financial controllers, your marketers, human resources, whatever and it's about discipline planning and discipline forecasting. Entrepreneurs are viewed as being more than successful in business. They are people who challenge, reshape and transform business. You know, as you grow and grow, you, you, you know, obviously you, the number of people involved in the organisations get bigger. You know, I watched our organisation go from 60 people to 300 people to 5,000 people and, you know, the importance of culture, of belonging, of creating a vision, of making sure core values are at the heart of an organisation becomes pretty important and, and a big part of that is to be able to have impact in a lot more people's lives through the way we supported them as employees, uh, the way we, we provided more workshops and education opportunities, a better career path. But at the same time, the heart of, of uh, the success of organisations I'm involved with are definitely to try to deeply understand and listen to our, our end uh, user, our customer. And so a big part of, of uh, Green Cross and a big part of our organisations now is to have an open, running conversation with our customers about what we do well, what we do badly at, what do we keep doing, start doing, stop do, doing, to stay relevant and continue to evolve a successful organisation. Sometimes inspiration can be found in the most unlikely of places. My wife and I love travelling and uh, we bumped into a, an amazing exhibition going on in Venice one year. One of the artists there was a fellow called Bruno Catalano and he's created a series of sculptures and they're a statue about travel and when you go somewhere, you meet lots of people, you see lots of stuff and that has deep impact on you and you take some baggage with you as you go on and move on to the next phase of your life but you always leave a little part of you behind at the same time. The little part you leave behind, you hope that's, that creates a better life for someone you've met and the little bit of baggage that you take with you maybe helps your journey, your business, your life, your whatever aspect of your life, it maybe helps improve who you are or what you do or uh, however you do things in life. Spending a lifetime with animals in his work, it's no wonder Glenn has a special place in his heart for a furry friend. Bo, here he is, the big man. <laughs> He's a Bernese mountain dog, uh, so loyal, so friendly, so happy, no malice, just loves people and loves every dog that he bumps into. So, you know, it just brings, it brings a smile to your face, face every time you see him. And, and obviously, very handsome. As a vet who's helped reshape the industry, it's clear to see Glenn really has helped create a better working world around him through positive change. Part of my job is to bring that passion into the boardroom or passion into the company to sell the why. Why are people turning up on a day-to-day -day basis? You know, in, in Green Cross, we were trying to change an industry to improve the way we delivered quality of medicine and surgery across Australia, to improve workplaces so that uh, our teams weren't getting burnt out and get emotionally fatigued. We're passionate about supporting our people in the front line to be better vets and to be better nurses. We're passionate about creating a network of aligned and collaborative professionals willing to share ideas, uh, to be the best they could be. And that's what you get passionate about as, a, as an entrepreneur. You are solving 
problems and you get excited by trying to solve those problems to, to, to tackle roadblocks. And as a, as a veterinary surgeon, as a young vet, I bumped into so many things that were wrong about my industry and, and my job, I felt, was strongly to try and solve why our vets were burning out, why we had the highest suicide rate, why our older vets had a poor succession plan. So a big part of the Green Cross journey was a better succession plan, better workplaces for our teams, better education opportunities, a better emotional support and better support so we didn't get so much fatigue happening in our industry, better facilities, better equipment, and at the end of the day, to talk to our customer to understand what they really needed, what our pet owners really desire from high quality, uh, purpose-driven veterinary practices. I want to thank Glenn for sharing his insights and knowledge on what has been and continues to be an incredible journey through business and life in Australia. A fascinating insight at what lies at the heart of the entrepreneur.